Today I've got this nice problem that was shortlisted for the 1979 International Math Olympiad. So it's got a nice combination of geometry with vectors and we'll see some calculus in the solution as well. So let's suppose that we've got two three-dimensional vectors, I'll call them A and B. We want to show that the magnitude of the cross product of A and B cubed is less than or equal to this object over here, which is like a bit of a mouthful, but let's look at what it is. We have three times the square root of three over eight times the magnitude of A squared times the magnitude of B squared times the magnitude of A minus B squared. So before we get looking at a solution, I wanna point out that there are some things built into this problem that give us some hints. So since we've got a magnitude of a cross product built into this problem, we probably want the well-known formula for the magnitude of the cross product in terms of the angle between these vectors. So let's maybe get that on the board. So there's the formula for the magnitude of the cross product in terms of the magnitude of the two component vectors as well as the sine of the angle between them. Okay, so let's see if there's some more hints built into this problem. Well, next up, I wanna notice that we have a, b, and a minus b. So if we've got two vectors a and b, well, what does the vector a minus b represent? Well, it actually represents kind of the closure of the triangle defined by vector a and vector b. So let's get a little sketch of that on the board. So as you see, if we've got a vector a and a vector b, then we can complete a triangle by looking at the vector a minus b. So we can think of that as going from the terminal point of b to the terminal point of A. So that closes that triangle. Furthermore, if we take the magnitude of these vectors, we know the side lengths of this triangle. So the side length here will be the magnitude of A, the side length here will be the magnitude of B, and the side length here will be this magnitude of A minus B. Okay, so let's maybe get a picture of that set up on the board now. So now we're interested in looking at a triangle so we've got magnitude A for that side length. We've got magnitude B for that side length. Then furthermore, by this setup, we know that this angle is theta. That's the angle between vector A and vector B. And then we know the magnitude of A minus B is this side length. So while we're at it, let's give names to the remaining angles in this triangle. Maybe we'll call this angle alpha because it's opposite this side A, and we'll call this angle beta because it's opposite this side B. And now, since we've got this formula, which was motivated by seeing that we had the magnitude of the cross product, and it involves the sine, maybe we should write something down involving the law of sines. So let's maybe recall what the law of sines looks like. So that tells us that the magnitude of A over sine of alpha equals the magnitude of B over sine of beta, which equals the magnitude of A minus B over sine of theta. This law of sines, together with rewriting the left-hand side of our proposed inequality using this formula, will allow us to do quite a bit of simplification here. So let's see how that'll go. So now we have the magnitude of the cross product of A and B cubed. So we can write this as magnitude A cubed times magnitude B cubed times sine cubed theta. So that's just by our formula. So we have equality there. But now I can put our goal inequality over here hanging off the right hand side. So we have three square root of three over eight, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, magnitude of A minus B, and those are all squared. But now we can do a little bit of simplification. Notice that our goal inequality is equivalent to the following inequality where I cancel off some of these factors of the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. So like I said, our proposed inequality is equivalent to magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine cubed theta is less than or equal to three root three over eight 
times the magnitude of A minus B quantity squared. So next up, I wanna notice that I can move this A minus B squared over and then do some simplification. So that is going to give me the magnitude of A times sine theta, the magnitude of B times sine theta, and then, and then an extra sine theta, which we're putting over the magnitude of A minus B, and then finally we've got an extra magnitude of A minus B in the denominator. So that's gonna be less than or equal to three root three over eight, or we propose that to be less than or equal to three minus root three over eight. So again, that's just from moving all of this stuff over to the other side and then rewriting some things a bit. So now let's see some simplification that can happen. We can take this A sine theta and then view the two ends of this equation, maybe multiply the sine theta up here and the sine alpha over there, meaning we're allowed to replace this with sine of alpha times the magnitude of A minus B. Okay, now we can do the same thing with this B times sine theta, or almost the same thing. We can write this as sine beta times the magnitude of A minus B. So now this magnitude of A minus B will cancel with this one, and the other one will also be canceled in the denominator. And let's see what we're left with. We're left with sine of alpha, sine of beta, sine of theta is less than or equal to this three times the square root of three over eight. So that's our new goal. So let's maybe summarize that at the top and then we'll finish it off. So after some work, we're down to the following equivalent statement. And what I mean by that is our proposed inequality that we want to show is equivalent to showing that sine alpha, sine beta, sine theta is less than or equal to three times the square root of three over eight where alpha plus beta plus theta is equal to pi. And notice this sum equaling pi is the same as saying that these are angles of a triangle, which is exactly the setup that we had on the last board. So there are a number of ways to finish this off. I'm actually gonna finish it off using Lagrange multipliers in multivariable calculus. I know that this isn't the easiest way, but I just think it's a nice application of this tool. So let's define the following two functions. So one of them will be called f, so it'll be f, x, y, z will be equal to sine x, sine y, and sine z. And then we'll have g of x, y, z. That's gonna be equal to x plus y plus z. So in fact, our goal could really be to maximize this function f subject to a constraint. And that constraint is that g of x, y, z is equal to pi. So we know that the maximum will occur at the place where the gradient of f and the gradient of g are scalar multiples of each other. So that means we need to solve the equation, gradient f equals lambda times gradient g. But that's really a system of three equations. So let's see which three equations are those. Those are gonna be cosine x, sine y, sine z equals lambda. So that comes from taking the partial with respect to x of the function f and the partial with respect to x of the function g. And then we will have similar equations for the partial with respect to y and the partial with respect to z. So we'll have sine x cosine y sine z equals lambda. And furthermore, we'll have sine x sine y and cos z equals lambda. But then it's not too hard to play around with these equations and see that we need, in order for these to hold, tangent of x to be equal to tangent of y to be equal to tangent of z. But let's see, x and y and z satisfy their sum is equal to pi, 
And, well, they can only be between zero and pi, given that they're angles of a triangle. So tangent is a one-to-one -one function on the interval from zero to pi. So the fact that it's one-to-one -one and that we have the output of tangent is the same at all these values x, y, and z tells us that x is equal to y is equal to z. Okay, but if x is equal to y is equal to z, then that means they are all equal to pi over 3, given that they sum to pi. So let's maybe add that in here. They're all equal to pi over 3. So that means the maximum occurs when they're all equal to pi over 3, but that tells us that f x y z is less than or equal to f of pi thirds, pi thirds, pi thirds, but that's equal to sine of pi over 3 cubed, but that's exactly equal to this quantity right here. So in fact, it's the square root of 3 over 2 quantity cubed, which is the same thing as this quantity here. Okay, so in fact that this inequality requires a little bit more checking. Perhaps we know that this pi over 3, pi over 30, pi over 3 is either a maximum or a minimum, but we can test which it is by using a test point. So I'll let you guys check that if you need to. So let's see what we've got. We see that this function f of x, y, z is less than or equal to this thing right here. But notice that that fulfills our inequality if we just apply f to the values alpha, beta, theta, and look at the extreme left and right hand side of this. And recall that this inequality was equivalent to this one over here by some algebraic manipula manipulation we did on the last board, so we're good to go. And that's a good place to stop.